I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. Hey, this week is Thanksgiving week. It is, and Honey, I know this is the time that you that oh. I come out of retirement of co of <laughs> cooking. Yeah, <laughs> and I cook your favorite things. Oh, that's right. That's yes. right. Yes, turkey, cornbread dressing. dressing. Yeah. Yes. With the giblet gravy and mm -hmm. uh, sweet potatoes. The candied sweet potatoes that you make like uh, nobody makes them like she does. Actually, it's my mom's recipe and yes, then she is. has improved on it. So it's 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 really a new good. and improved thing, huh? Yeah. Like they new, say new, new and improved. improved. Yeah, new and yes. improved. You know, but really think many people only think about giving thanks on Thanksgiving. Yes. But we should be giving thanks all the time. All In the fact, time. Well, I'm talking about uh, give thanks with a thankful heart. Yes. This should be a lifestyle, it not just be. something that we do one one time a year. It yes. should be a, a lifestyle. Now, I realize I'm departing because this is Thanksgiving week. I, I, discovering Jesus, will part three will be next week. Yes. But we're going to depart because of Thanksgiving, and yes. I'm going to talk to you about giving thanks with a thankful heart. Sometimes people in their, their daily routine of life, uh, they don't think about being thankful, but we need to realize that there's a lot to be thankful for. Sometimes people want to just relegate it to a spiritual thing, but in the natural, God has been to it. See, God wants us to have a great life in the natural as well as in the spiritual, and we need to learn how to, to be thankful. Amen? You know, uh, Thanksgiving Day is uh, a, a time that we sort of stop the hustle and bustle of life and give thanks. Now, I don't know whether the ladies stop or not because they're usually making Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it is considered a day when we, when we do sort of let up a little bit. It's a time that we, that we are thankful for all that we have and all that God has done for us. You know, the... First Thanksgiving in America, if you uh, studied history, you know it was in around 1621 when the pilgrims there in the Plymouth Colony, uh, they marked this by feasting because they had made it through a year. And if you'll study, you'll find out it was a tough year. And uh, the Native Americans came and brought food and and so two years later, though, they had had a drought and, and they called it a day of fasting and prayer and they called it a day of thanksgiving because it, the rain came during their prayers. And gradually the custom began to prevail in, among all of the New England settlements and became an annual celebration and it was a thanksgiving of the harvest time. The first thanksgiving in the mid you know, I, I guess I should say it this way. In the mid-19th century, Sarah Hale, she was the editor of Goody's uh, Ladies Book. She led a movement to establish Thanksgiving as a national holiday. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed the last Thursday in November to be Thanksgiving Day. This is a great thing for our nation. But we got to understand Thanksgiving was God's idea to begin with. God, if you look in the Word of God, there's continually Thanksgiving. Even Jesus was thankful, if you'll read in his life. Thanksgiving really should become an attitude of life, something that we do. Let's just for a moment, now I'm, on, I'm only going to touch a few of them, but in the Psalms, it's full of thanksgiving. Let's just, let's touch a few of these right now, okay? 
Psalms 26, 7, sing a song of thanksgiving, telling of all your wonders. Psalms 50, 14, make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Psalm 69, 30, then I will praise, praise God's name with singing and I will honor him with thanksgiving. Psalms 95, 2, let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. And these are just a few in the Psalms. There's a bunch of them. Uh, 104, enter the gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with prayer. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Psalms 107, 22, let, let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyful about his gracious acts. Psalm 116, 17, I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Psalms 147, 7, sing, sing out your thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God with a harp. You know, it seems to me like that uh, the people, Israel, and that was the Psalms, was their, was their psalm book and their prayer book. It seems like it's filled with a lot of thanksgiving. You know, I believe that if we will learn how to give thanks to God for what he's doing for us, I, I believe it'll take us to a higher level with him. I believe we'll receive more of his blessings. You know, uh, too many Christians, and I, I don't mean this derogatory, and thank God that I don't believe it happens here, but in a lot of places that I've been, you know, uh, they're caught up in living just in the minimum of God's blessings just a trickle, just a little fellowship of God, just an occasional blessing. But Jesus told us in John 10, 10 that he wanted us to have life and have it more abundantly, not just, not just a little bit, not just occasionally, all the time. And I think that part of receiving all the blessings from God is being thankful. Now I'm gonna throw something at you here. How many of you are parents or grandparents? Okay. Now, how many of you, when you do something for those, those your kids or your grandkids, and they show thanksgiving or say thank you and are grateful, how many of you makes you want to give more to them, do more for them? Do you know what? Our Heavenly Father is the same way. Our Heavenly Father is the same way. You know, uh, I, now, now you're going to laugh at me, but I do this. I may be playing a, a game on my iPad and, and I, I solve a great, uh, a, a big problem and I'll say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm driving down the road and Lynette said, what'd you say? I said, I just said, thank you, Jesus. You know, I just, I'm all the, all the time giving thanks. Hey, I'm not here by chance. You're not there by chance. It's because of what God has done for you. It's because of where, what, and we need to have that gratefulness, that thanksgiving all the time. You know the old song, oh, Lord lift me up, let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I've found. Lord plant my feet on higher ground. You want to get on higher ground, learn how to praise God. Give him thanks for everything he's done. You know, as we look into this Thanksgiving, I want to look at uh, some levels of gratitude. And I know there's a whole bunch more, but I, want, I just want to zero on this. And I believe that uh, as we get involved with them, it will lead us to a, a, a more of God's blessings in our lives. Expressing thanks can be done out of habit. Now, Ephesians 5, 4 says in the New King James, neither, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather give, giving of thanks. The message Bible gets it pretty plain. Though some tongues just love to, to taste the taste of gossip, those who follow Jesus have better use for language than that. Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fit our style. Thanksgiving is our dialect are our language. Thanksgiving is our dialect. 
You know, giving thanks is a great habit to get into. Even in the natural, we need to say thank you when somebody does something for us. You know, it's nice even to write a note or send a text when somebody has done something nice for you. Sometimes we say thank you out of an automatic response. And, you know, we may not be saying it from a thankful heart. Come on now. You just do it. But are you really saying it from a thankful heart? Are we saying it because we're expected to say it? And so we say it, but underneath we're gripping and complaining. Oh, you're getting quiet on me now. That's a bad place to get quiet. You know, I think, I think we've all run into people and dealt with people that are ungrateful. They receive help and they don't even bother to ever say thank you for it. You know, uh, it's a good habit to get into the habit of thanksgiving, the habit of giving thanks when somebody does something good for us. And we should e express our thanksgiving to God continually. I mean, all during the day. Too many people only reserve giving thanks to God and worship to God when they come to church. But you should be in an attitude of thanksgiving and worship 24 hours a day, not just whenever you come to church or just when you happen to read your Bible. You know, thank Turn to your neighbor and say, Thanksgiving's a good habit. Now, you know, uh, Thanksgiving can just be offered out of courtesy. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, be, careful in all circum uh, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. You know, we expect thanks from others when we, when we do something for them. We, it, it's just an expected thing, and it is, a, it, is, it is a courtesy to say thank you when somebody does something. You know, uh, how many of you ever, and I do it a lot, and I, uh, as I'm driving by the... Uh, the traffic workers out there, I'll roll my window down and say thank you. I do it sometimes. I especially do it when it's cold. I'll say thank you. You know, how many of you ever say thank you to one of these ushers? Come on now. Just don't, don't look at me like that. Don't start <laughs> saying, well, what's he talking about? Hey, they... <laughs> They are here to take care of you and to help you. You know, some people say, well, my circumstance is so, so bad, there's no reason to give thanks. Let me tell you something. It says here, be thankful in all circumstances. I don't care what position you find yourself in or circumstance, you can, always be, you can always be thankful because you can see somebody else that's worse off than you are. Don't become so introverted that you don't realize how, that you have it pretty good compared to somebody else. I'm always thankful. And if I see somebody, and, I'm being, and I'm, I thank God I'm blessed, but if I see those less fortunate than me, I, 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 I say a prayer for them. Now, I don't know any, I, I would like to help some of those people, but you don't know whether that's really real or not that are on the corner. Because there was an article in the paper about four or five years ago uh, about they did a, and he said, they asked him why it didn't work. He said, why work when I make $60,000 a year just standing on the corner? That's actually, that was in a newspaper. But you know what? I still, when I go by, I still pray for those people. I say, Lord, bless them. Send somebody a 
cross their path. And some of them say they want, if they wanted to work, I see signs all the way up and down the road that says hiring. Come on now. Now I realize there are some that are in that that are incapacitated, and yes, they need to help. But you know, we need to learn how to be thankful for what we have and pray for those that are less fortunate than we are. Come on now. I hope I hadn't stepped on anybody's toes. If I did, just say ouch and we'll go on, okay? <laughs> the Apostle Paul wrote this, and you ever look at his life, his circumstances were not always good. He had some bad circumstances. And you could say bad circumstances. <laughs> I mean, he faced some stuff. But he said, no matter what, give thanks. You know, thanks is proper etiquette. It's good manners. I was taught this as a kid. Sometimes I don't know what's being taught nowadays. I learned it at home and I learned it at school. How many of you learned to say thank you? You know, how many of you have ever seen, and I have had, I give a, some of that, those suckers or lollipops, whatever you call them, to one of the kids, or I do something and that parents say, what do you say? And they'll say, thank you. You know, how many of you have ever had to do that with your kids? Tell them to say thank you. You know, that's good to teach a child that, but we as believers should never have to be nudged to say thank you to God. Thanksgiving should come from a heart that is filled with gratitude for what God has done for us, what he's provided for us, how he's helped us. In fact, we should be so full of gratitude that we can't remain quiet. It just has to come out. Thanksgiving, indeed, is a courtesy that we extend to others, but how much more, how much more I'll say it again. How much more should we extend this to God? He gave his son that we might have life and have it more abundantly. If, if, you ever, if there was nothing else, that, that's something, the most important thing to be thankful for. Amen? Now, expressing thanks as we saw from reading the Psalms is an act of worship and praise. Colossians 3.16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill our lives. Teach, teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual, and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. With thankful hearts. Give, giving thanks is a part, of, that's our praise and worship. I mean, man, you find this all in the Bible. It's all, the Old Testament, was, it was an integral part of their worship, giving thanks to God. Some of the rituals that they did in the Old Testament were, were a thank you. You know, there was examples in the Old Testament of corporate thanksgiving and individual thanksgiving. And we've read it in the Psalms and David wrote many of the Psalms and, and he was always offering worship and thanksgiving for, for what God had done for him. King Solomon gathered the Israelites together to offer worship and give thanks to God when they built the temple. In the New Testament, we see all kinds of examples of thanksgiving. You see it in the life of Jesus. You see it here in the life of the Apostle Paul. We just read about give thanks in every circumstance. You see it in the life of the early church there in, in, the, in the Acts. In our worship services, in our churches, as we were this morning, Stop and think about it for a minute. How much of our 
singing and worshiping this morning had to do with giving thanks? Huh? I see four or five people shaking their heads. I don't know about the rest of you. Y'all here? Y'all gone home already. <laughs> Did anybody notice that our songs were filled with thanksgiving today? I don't know whether they planned it or not. I don't know. I, I, I never talked to them about songs. I expect them to be able to, to follow the leading of the Spirit because they know, they know that God knows what's going to go on. And I expect them to, to the, the Lord to speak to them and then put, put a group of songs together that will minister. I don't know how many times I'm sitting down there and they're singing songs. And man, that really goes along with what I'm going to say today. That goes, hey, well, that's the way it should be. I shouldn't have to let them know. I shouldn't tell them, okay, I want you to sing this. Don't you? Now, sometimes I do have a song that I want it to end, and, but that's the only time I ever sell them in there. If you ever notice, I'll turn around sometimes in the service and ask Dan, I say, you got, you got anything? Because sometimes while I'm ministering, the Lord will give them something that will be beneficial at the end of the service. So our songs, our public prayers should be filled with thanksgiving. Not, we should not be ashamed to lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. What is lifting of the hands means? I give myself to you. I surrender to you. That's what it means. I know sometimes people are a little timid and they do this. Hey, don't go half mass, go full. <laughs> Now, it takes a while to learn how to do that sometimes, but uh, because you don't, you feel, uh, but hey, be thankful. When you're raising your hands, it's a sign of your thankfulness to God, thankfulness for what he has done for you. You know, sometimes people are very, very uh, open when they have, their personal time of prayer, but when they come into a public place to pray, uh, they're a little more reserved. Hey, learn how just to be thankful before God no matter who's around. You know, uh, we need to learn how, <laughs> well, I'll go on. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. You know, some people don't really pray over their food. But we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful. There's a lot of people that don't have. And when you don't have a lot, you be thankful for what you got. I've been there many times with when I was growing up. We didn't have it, but we sat down and thanked God for what we had and thanked God for what we were going to receive. Have a thankful heart all the time, giving thanks to God for what he's done yes. and saying thank you to somebody that does something for you. And you know, honey, just even the little things, yes. I know when uh, somebody opens the door for me, I say thank you. Yes. And uh, it's just, uh, thank you is a very good word to have in our vocabulary. Yeah, it's something that we need to have a lifestyle of thanks for everything that is done for us. That's right. Well, Let's talk about our product. Uh, actually, uh, it, uh, my three CDs on discovering Jesus. Yes. And then your CD on defeating Satan's strategies through prayer. And then the, the little pocketbook by, by my dad mm -hmm. called The Present Day Ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that sounds like a funny title, 
but he does have a ministry yes. on the earth, although he's not here, but That's he right. does have a ministry on the earth. He does. And this talks about that right now. And that's all, how can they get that? For a gift of $25 or more, you can get that offer. Oh, all right, yes. all right. And we are taking enrollments for the spring uh, semester of Rainbow Bible Training College. That's right. Yes, and so uh, you can go to rbtc.org, get all the information. You can even fill out an application there online. And what's happening this week? Oh my, guess what we get to see? The Christmas lights. The light. Christmas lights. It starts actually Wednesday, the Wednesday before the 23rd, The 23rd, the 23rd at 6 p.m. We turn those lights on. Yes. We've been doing it for oh, I don't know how many years now. I don't know how many years. <laughs> Bunches and, of years. And they I mean, all of our grandkids were <laughs> babies at yeah, the time. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, the, the first time I think that we actually uh, had the grandkids there, it was, uh, I was holding one of them in my arms and yeah. one of them was just, uh, and we, ha we had was just the two of them. Long two of, before that. Two yes. before that. Yes. But uh, November 24th then through January the 2nd, they yes. will be on 5.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. on the Rama campus. Go to ramalights.org and you can get all the information that you, that you want to get right there. You know, now, don't we have that, that cyber sale deal oh, coming on? Oh, we do have that cyber sale. Don't forget, uh, that's November the 28th uh, through the 29th. Yeah. Starts on Monday at midnight, and then it ends uh, on Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. 50% 50 off, off everything except yes. the Legacy Bible. That's right, yes. And, and uh and some of the other material that's not our material that we didn't print. Yes, and so that's a good sale, ladies. You know, we like sales, so I would encourage you to go to rhema.org slash store for all the details. Well, have a great Thanksgiving week, and yes. until we see you next time, thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. I read the book, I win. You win because Christ our Redeemer lives. We need to get up every day and say, Christ has redeemed me from sickness, from lack, from spiritual death. Discovering Jesus, an anointed three CD audio series by Kenneth W. Hagan. And the present day ministry of Jesus Christ, a classic slimline book by Kenneth E. Hagan. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. You have got to take authority over it. Defeating Satan's Strategies Through Prayer, a powerful CD by Lynette Hagan. Four CDs and the Slimline book can be yours today for a gift of only $25 or more. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or you can log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Don't wait, do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.